Should you use Bunei in Fire Emblem Engage on Maddening Mode? Is he a good unit? In this guide, I'm going to break the unit down, so let's jump in. Let's go over Bunei's growths. His growths are 65% HP, 30% Strength, 10% Magic, 40% Dex, 35% Speed, 45% Defense, 25% Res, 40% Luck, and 10% Build. His standout stats are definitely his Dex, his Defense, and his Luck, surprisingly. Uh, his health is above average, so that's also something of note. 10% build is also decent. 35% speed is kind of average, and he's also going to be joining your team on armor, so he's not going to be very fast, and he's definitely not going to be doubling things. Bunei's passive is seconds. What it does is he has a percent chance to keep a consumed packed lunch. So if you have leftovers after cooking, you can only have up to one of these items at a time. Whatever his luck level is, is the percent chance he retains that item. So the pros and cons of Bune. Uh, for pros, he has decent HP, so he's kind of like a bruiser. He can kind of tank physical. That's his entire purpose. He is on Great Knight. You can reclass him to Warrior to help him be more relevant and viable. He does have six move when he joins your team. Uh, for cons for the unit, he has generally low stats. His strength, speed, res, and dex are pretty low for the point in time in the game in which you get him. He's also already on an advanced class, so promoting him isn't going to fix these stats. He also has pretty poor speed growth, which usually hurts most units, and he doesn't have high strength growth to compensate. So he's not going to be hitting very hard. There's definitely better options for the middle game uh, and late game, so Timera and Gold Mary are definitely better tanks. They have similar defensive stats, but just with more speed on their classes. Uh, so Gold Mary on Hero is definitely more durable, and she also has good base speed and higher base strength. And Timera, once you upgrade her to Picket, is actually pretty tanky, and has both both of them have better speed, both of them have better res, both of them have better strength. So he's basically just outclassed by those two units specifically. The level of investment required to get Bune online is pretty low. He generally doesn't really need anything aside from reclassing. He doesn't really pop off either. He just kind of is a decent like filler unit until you get better things in my opinion. But if you want to run him, I would put him on a different class. So the cost of investment is going to be 2.5k to second seal him into something better. So for best classes for Bune, I would say it's going to be things that everyone is good in. So Hero would be good for him just for the Brave Assist. He's not going to be really contributing to big damage here. He's not going to be doubling anything. Even with Speed Taker, I don't think you can push him into doubling thresholds. So that's definitely going to be a problem for him. Halberdier would be good just so that he can actually double. Now, he doesn't have high base strength that's really going to blow you away. So even on a Halberdier, he probably will have trouble one-rounding things. So he's going to not be the best Halberdier. There's definitely better Halberdiers. Royal Knight, I would skip. Berserker... Could be good just to help improve his strength. Berserker does have a dex cap of 23, so as you're approaching that, you can second seal him into something else. A warrior is probably his best class. This is the case for most units who don't really have a thing that they can excel in. It gives him more damage in the form of strength. Uh, the speed isn't going to help him, but it gives him access to bows. This allows him to be just a backup chip damage unit that can sometimes deal... 20 to 40 percent of enemies max hp with an axe now you could try running a crit build on him but his dex isn't really super high so he's not going to like pop off in terms of a crit build but that might be his best use case if you want to try to one round on him he doesn't have the raw strength to one round most things if anything but warrior is probably his best class overall sniper and bow knight i would skip he doesn't have high enough strength or high enough dex to go into either of those General could be okay. It's probably better than Great Knight because it at least gives him more strength, and that's definitely an issue he has. He can't... The thing with Armor Knight, or I'm sorry, with Great Knight, is that it needs something. Like, you need, like, high damage. You need, like, high defensive stats. He doesn't have either. He does have high defense and defense growth. Well, let me rephrase that. He has average, above average defense because by the time you get him your Jader Louie probably has way higher defensive stats than him and higher strength. So he's basically just worse than Jade or Louie because of base stats. Jade actually joins your team with 14 strength on Axe Armor. 
and 18 defense before she promotes. So he's basically going to be on average worse than Jade or Louie at tanking. So he's kind of too late to be a tank, so you probably should just throw him on Warrior. Uh, Paladin, this could be okay. It's never going to fix his speed though. His base speed is too low and his speed growth is too low, so he's not going to double. Wolf Knight, like anything you put him on, he's going to be hitting once, so you have to factor that in. So that's why Warrior is probably his best class. Honestly, I don't even recommend putting him on Griffin, because if you look at his bases, he has 30% strength, 35% speed, so he'd be at 40% speed growth on Griffin, or I'm sorry, on Wyvern, and he would be at 50% strength. So he's going to be able to hit things once, but he's not going to double, and that's that's not going to be very good. <laughs> that's not, you know, you're, if you're going to hit things once, you should hit them as hard as humanly possible, and putting him on Wyvern, it would be viable, but he's not going to be one-rounding almost anything. Uh, magic classes I would skip completely. Uh, but I would just focus on Hero, Halberdier, Warrior, and, you know, maybe Berserker just to improve his strength for a few level ups, and then put him on Warrior. But Warrior and Berserker, they're so similar, um, you might as well just put him on Warrior. So, yeah, that's it for classes. Let's go over early skills, or skills he should get in general. So, he can't get Cantor until after... Chapter 17 when you get Sigurd back. So Cantor is something that he could use that it would be good on him But he's not gonna be able to, to uh, grab for a while if you want to increase his damage momentum could help Especially if, if he's on warrior this would allow him to get at least plus five damage from movement uh, Which definitely would push his damage up a little bit So now you do have to play around this and you have to know how to use it, but it could be good for him Lance power could be good if you want to run him on lances, but honestly if his speed is so abysmal that you should just run axes on him and just go for big hits. So if anything, axe power makes the most sense. And you get that from Ike. So putting him on axe power one and two and just going for huge damage. Or if you want to go for like a wrath build, you could do that. So wrath would be a good option. He, he starts with 1200 SP, but if you want to get him this, you'll probably have to put him on an emblem ring and then have him level up eight times, which is a lot, I'm not gonna lie. Leveling up eight times on an emblem ring is gonna take some time for him because he's not going to be killing things consistently. Units that kill get the most XP. So if he is not able to just one round enemies by himself and he needs help and he needs set up, you're gonna have to play around that for a lot of chapters before you can get him online. And honestly, Panette is just way better at doing this. So there's not really, Panette joins the next chapter and has 1500 SP, so <laughs> that's three level ups you don't have to get, and it's highly unlikely he's going to get three level ups on chapter 12. It's just probably not going to happen. I mean, even if you fed him the whole map, I think at best he'd get like one to two level ups, maybe. So, yeah, it's going to be really difficult to get this online. Now, he can immediately get axe power. Uh, you'd want to engrave an accurate axe so he can actually land hits. Micaiah, I would skip. Lucina. So if you're going to put him on Warrior, Dual Assist could be okay. You would eventually get him Dual Assist Plus for 2k SP. And he would just basically spam Longbow and poke things. So that could be decent. I mean, that's this is true of any unit. Any unit on Warrior can be relevant. Uh, Draconic Hex would be okay if he could uh, unlock it in a reasonable amount of time. It's going to take you quite a few chapters before he could unlock this. It's going to be difficult to level him up. So uh, Pair Up, same thing. He's not going to be able to get that easily. But I would say main things to focus on would be Cantor, uh, maybe Momentum, Axe Power, Build I would skip. Vantage could be okay if you want to make like some kind of crit axe build. He's going to have a difficult time pulling it off though in my opinion because of his SP, the rate at which he'll level up, the damage he'll deal. These are all things working against him. I would not run swords or lances on him. He's not going to be doubling so there's no, you might as well just go for big damage. Speed, I would skip. Speed Taker, I wouldn't run. So anything on Lin, pretty much going to skip. Lunar Brace, not going to be as good as well because he's not doubling. Lunar Brace is fantastic when you double or quad because then it scales your damage insanely. If you're just doing single hits, you're better off going for crits for the most part. So those I would skip. But I would mostly go for Axe Power, Wrath, Canter, Momentum, and potentially, you know, Dual Assist on Warrior, 
maybe Draconic Hex if you really want to save up for it. Then he could be like a longbow debuffer. But Saphir is basically better than him at this, and by the time you get Saphir, he'll probably be able to unlock this. So you could just have her do that, because she's already a warrior, and she comes with 2k SP. So <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of breakpoints where other things just outclass him. So I'm definitely going to mention that because if you want to run this unit, you should know what you're getting yourself into. Let's go over equipment he would run on his different classes. So on Great Knight, you can run Silver Sword or Silver Axe and try to get it to plus one to plus three. For engravings, I wouldn't recommend putting an engraving, like one of the damage engravings on his weapons. I would put like an accuracy engraving on his weapons because he is just going to be single hitting. So Silver Axe with an accuracy engraving would probably be fine. You could also run Silver Great Axe. Now, he might be taking serious damage when attacking with a Silver Great Axe, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, Tomahawk with an Accuracy Engraving would be pretty good on him. This is a general purpose weapon that's great on any Axe user. Silver Axe with an Accuracy Engraving is similarly good. Uh, hammer could be decent. The only downside to Hammer is it's very inaccurate. Uh, but with Accuracy Engraving, it could be a decent weapon. Generally, mages are better at killing enemy armor, but hammer isn't a bad option. Now his strength isn't high enough and his speed isn't high enough that he's going to double or hit super hard with it. He'll just hit like reasonably hard and probably do like 50% of an enemy's max HP when hitting an armor. Whole axe can be a decent option. This allows him to at least whack enemy wolves for decent damage, but it definitely will require accuracy engraving to be good. Killer axe is an option for him. If you want to run crits on him, he would want Ike, or he would want Wrath unlocked. So you can just run Ike on him until you unlock Wrath, if you want to do that. And he could run a crit axe build on Warrior, that would be decent. Now if he's on Warrior, Longbow is going to be one of your better options. And he also won't be able to wield the Silver Bow, so Steel Bow. Steel Bow and Longbow, but Longbow is good because it extends the range that he can be a chain attack backup so that's definitely huge killer bow could be decent if you run crit engraving on it but his low strength is going to make this not as relevant because a lot of crit engravings either drastically reduce your luck or in other words your dodge so you get more crits incoming or they drastically reduce the damage on the killer weapon itself so he's probably not the best user of killer bow same thing with killer axe to be honest he will suffer immensely by running this, but there are ways around it. So like if you run Roy, for example, that gives you holdout, so that way you can survive and things like that. Like Roy plus Vantage can allow him to survive. That's true of any axe unit or user of the killer axe. But basic equipment, silver axe, tomahawk, steel great, or silver great axe, and then longbow, I would say are the main things he wants to be using. For emblem rings, I would say Sigurd is better on someone else. He wants like a kind of bruiser emblem ring, so something like Roy for the holdout and the strength increase would be good for him. Uh, something like Ike so that he could take half damage because he will be getting doubled, so having the damage will make him a little bit more durable. It also gives him wrath if you want to run a crit build. So Roy, Ike, Lucina isn't going to be too good on him because this usually wants to be on a unit who uses bonded shield and he is not going to be popping off. Now, potentially, if you run a bunch of cavalry, he could be a bonded shield user. I'm not I'm not sure I'm not so sure what his supports look like though, because the thing with bonded shield is you want the unit to be able to make use of dual support, which scales your avoid based on support ranks with all adjacent allies, and I don't know that he has a ton of supports to make use of this, but this is something he could theoretically run. Uh, Corrin, I wouldn't run on him. Byleth, I wouldn't run. I would say the main thing he wants is like Ike and Roy. Sigurd you could use, but I, I would argue there's better things to put on Sigurd. Sigurd is great for dive units who can get in one round and get out. He's not going to be doing that consistently, and if he is, it's going to be difficult. Erica could be good, but you're not really taking advantage of Lunar Brace when you single hit. If you double, it's, it really scales. If you double or quad, this is what Erica wants. So putting it on dude who's just hitting once, I don't think is worth it. And also, Erica does improve magic weirdly in decks. So it doesn't really help his bases. And it doesn't really help his kit. So Ike, Roy, maybe Sigurd. 
potentially Lucina, but Lucina, I think, should go on a layer, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful. Bune, he's kind of like a B-tier unit. He's not bad. He's serviceable. He'll do okay. He's, I mean, potentially he's C if you compare him to, like, Jade and Louie as, like, tank roles, because by the time you get him, they will out-level and out-stat him, for sure. Like, they'll already be higher stats than him. So there's definitely some consideration there. Like, in a vacuum, he's not a bad unit, but compared to other units... Like, if I put Jade and Louie in B tier, he's definitely not as good as them. He's probably, like, a C, uh, which, in my opinion, C tier is, like, viable, but not remotely optimal or even standout. So he's, he's like, a viable unit. That's what I would say. So, yeah, definitely like and subscribe. Feel free to drop a comment. Let me know if you have any tactics you use on Bunei that are interesting or cool, and I'll see you in the next one.